So let us explore some creepy library! Alright, just my idea of fun. And yes, that is half serious and half sarcasm. Because at least it's something different. Uh, uh, that book is moving. Alright, who let all the bugs and shit in here? Like, really? Ah. Okay, who the hell ransacked this place before they abandoned it? Because there's crap everywhere. Well, I suppose maybe with all the flies and stuff in here, they, you know. Maybe they knocked all the stuff over. Who knows? How are these lanterns still working? Well, technically, we know the answer because the library's keepers are still here and all that. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, so let's use this opportunity to talk about a bunch of things that I've deliberately skipped in the interest of time and to give myself uh, something to talk about during this over here. Where should I start? Uh, let's start with Matoya first, I guess. I love her, frankly. Just because she's, she's not that unkind, but she's just so stuck in her ways and so unapologetic about it that I love it. And she kind of brings the point of, like, something you don't really see in a lot of RPG characters. It's like, yeah, you just fucking just bust into their house, you know, like, should you really expect that woman to welcome when you do that? And she's the kind of person, she's like, what the hell? She's like, knock first at least, you sons of bitches. So I, I absolutely love her for that. And she's just such a breath of fresh air compared to everyone else who's so overly polite all the damn time. Or the people who are just obviously downright rude and have no, you know, kinder, softer side hidden somewhere underneath there. But I, one thing I do hate, and I'm blaming the writers for this because it's not part of her character, when she mistakes off and over her sister. I absolutely hate every single person who ever does that and and i'm talking both in universe and out and that is like pretty much just an english only thing it does not exist in the other languages where she just presumes correctly that he's one of louis uh, grandchildren and the reason it bugs me is because and people in the fandom joke about this too that lol he looks like his sister therefore he is feminine no not only is that misogynistic in his thinking because it gives the horrible implication that the females are the weaker of the sexes, and it's not. We simply have our differences. We're both weaker and stronger in different ways. But not only that, but it's like, it just shows how ignorant people are. Because Newsflash, he, he, he hasn't grown hair on his balls yet, okay? Let, let's put it bluntly to that. And... Yeah, they do look and dress alike a little bit. Well, it's kind of natural because they are siblings and they are the same age. I mean, granted, not all siblings have to like look alike like that, but it's more common they do than, than they don't. And before, you know, puberty hits in full force and secondary sex characteristics start to take place, there's actually not that much difference physiologically between uh, girls and boys. And... It kind of pains me, even though I grew up in a, in a fairly decent sized city and everything like that. And obviously some people grew up in small, tighter knit ones and everything. But have you people never had that one new student who transferred, who you weren't sure if it was a boy or a girl because it was either a girl with really short hair or it was a tomboy or a boy who actually had long hair? That happened a bunch of times when I was a kid. Because you literally can't tell the difference. Like, most of the differences between boys and girls in Western culture are actually societal-based. Like, the girls wearing pink and long hair and skirts like stuff like that. Yeah. We actually put that upon, you know, our children and ourselves. But if, if we all dress gender neutrally and all, like, you know, there was no stigma about how boys and girls are supposed to look, you would be hard-pressed to find uh, much uh, a difference most of the time in telling between the two apart. So it always kind of pissed me off. And not only that, but on top of that, he's not feminine in any way. I mean, at best, you can get away with calling him metrosexual. But that's 
pretty much like every like 90% of elves and men anyway so yeah so that always really kind of bugged me because it like again I know it's meant to be harmless but it is so goddamn misogynistic and, and there's so much double standard because at the same time why are you getting all getting hit by that shouldn't the argument be oh well she looks like her brother therefore she is masculine but no nobody ever makes that argument do they and of course, the hilarious part of it is, uh, in the lore book, it's actually explicitly stated that, yeah, she's uh, a bit of a tomboy. So, yeah, that even just throws a more of a monkey wrench into the works of that stupid idea. So I hate it for that. But anyway, I digress, uh, ranting over. That's what, just one of the things that's always, always pissed me off. Just in general, not, it's not something exclusive to what's been happening now. But anyway... Let's talk about Alphino a little bit himself here. Well, him and Yastola. Now, this is one of the few things. Well, I shouldn't say few things. But one of the things I was very much looking forward to in Heaven's Ward. Because the Duranian Hinterlands was actually a zone. Will that cleanse, please? Um, was actually a zone we knew about as, as, as existing. Before the Heaven's Ward was even announced. Okay? Because there was actually a tale about something that happened before the exodus specifically Louis was leaving to go to Eorzea to you know oh calamity bullshit and whatever need to get over there and it's not gonna let me there we go okay so I was really looking forward to it especially after what we saw in the second act of the game where we saw a lot of character development. I figured this would carry over to the third act when we finally went here. Because this, now that we've actually returned to the Charlayan colony that was left 15 years ago. It was a great opportunity to have some actual character development. And I was even more disappointed that the person we're with is Justola, Who, I've, I've made it quite clear in the past, I am not fond of her in the slightest. I do not like her at all. Um... But a bunch of that is actually rooted in the fact that she has so much potential and it's all fucking squandered. But just to give a basic history, because I, um, I'm actually more rambling now, even though I kind of had things planned to say for this. Basically, 20 years ago, when the, when the Garlean stormed, stormed upon Alamigo and decided to take that place shit over... A couple people from Charlayne decided to, for whatever reasons I do not understand yet, that hasn't actually been, I don't think, ever explained in any way, shape, or form. Kind of go over there and kind of uh, placate and parlay with the Garleans a bit. And basically the Garleans were not having fucking any of it and pretty much snubbed them really bad. So as a result, the Charlayans go back home. And pretty much decided to get the fuck out of Dodge. And after five years of planning, I presume most of the planning was going to, um, making sure people, once they were over there, had, you know, jobs and, um, and houses to live in and stuff like that. I'm probably guessing that was most of the time. Um, actually, 15 years ago, actually evacuated the, the entire city in the space of a single night. Now, obviously, here you have... My character Alphino, who doesn't remember any of this because he was less than a year old when this all happened. Um, so he so he knows he's been part of this. Uh, I presume it was not only by his own confession, but I presume it's been a topic, you know, one of the old war stories the family likes to tell a lot kind of thing. But he has no memories of this move other than the fact that he took part in it. But you have Yastola, who is several years older, who does remember her time here. And this would be a great opportunity to actually explore how was the Charlayan colony different from the Charlayan motherland? How did the citizens feel about the actual exodus or whatever? How did their lives change as a result of it? Anything like that. And not only on top of all this, on top of all this, which really pisses me off even further, is one of the big uh, purporters of the move in the fucking first place was Alphano's father, who is a member of the forum. Um, the forum being which their governing body. Um, 
I know the story didn't make that clear, but that's kind of not that important right now. So not only not only it was, you know, you have memories here, but you have somebody who is directly descended to somebody who actually was the one calling for this move and was actually a huge planner of it and everything like that. So you could even further expand, you know, like I said, how it changed their lives and how the citizens felt like it and whatever like that. And lost my train of thought here for a second. And you could also kind of explore, you know, considering both, you know, Alphano and Alizé left home literally right after they graduate school, like right when they're legally able to, you know, maybe explore, you know, some of their, a bit of their family as a result of that. And, you know, we, we know kind of why they left home uh, a bit, you know, they wanted to, you know, follow in their grandfather's footsteps, you know, figure out, you know, what he was doing, what he died for, all that stuff. But considering how much of an early age they left home as, like... That kind of implies to me in some port in some some way, shape, or form, and again, this is entirely just 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 what I imagine in my head with, with no other proof to go on besides, you know, the fact that they left so damn early, is are things not so great at home for them? And furthermore, how do they feel about, you know, having to move so early and whatnot and how they are different from their peers as a result of they have no memory of the Charlayan colony and what and and, and whatever. Um, because they're now part of a new generation who has no memories of this place. And, like, there is so- I mean, I understand why they couldn't get into this, because we do have to very quickly usher in the final act of the game, which we are in now, and get to the conclusion. So I can kind of understand, to some extent, why, um, they couldn't go into this. But this is also a thing of them shoehorning themselves into having to rush to the ending here. But there was so much fucking potential here that to do something with, and it's just completely fucking squandered. And one of the reasons why it was so important to me, besides, you know, that the Charlayans just fascinate me as a whole, is that with the exception of Minfilia and Tataru, um, the, the main headliners of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn are fucking Charlayan. And we know, yet we know very little about not only them, but their upbringing as a whole. Like... What makes them different from the rest of the Eorzeans other than a, I mean, other than a Charlayan education? And you never find that out. And, it, and to me, it's just, it's just, it's such a massive disappointment. Because these are the very people, I mean, obviously us being a blank slate, you, you can't avoid that, okay? You, you just can't because, you know, you the player are supposed to be this character. So obviously they can't give your character much of a personality or anything like that. So that, that I can completely understand. But considering we are a member of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, and they are so very obvious the people we are supposed to root for, even though they do give at least some moral gray areas for um, for other factions in the game at some point. Um, not quite enough, but I understand. But you're very clearly supposed to root for the Scions, and supposed to be on their side. And yet, they know very little, not only do we know very little about them in general, they also know very little about each other. Like, Yustola, how the fuck would you not know that Alphano hasn't been back to the hinterlands since he literally left when he was, like, probably barely walking and thus has no memory of it? You should know this. You should have, you should very well know that once they abandoned the city, everybody but your master all just fucking left and nobody came back. You should fucking know this. Like, what reason? I mean, if none of you had the reason to go back, why would somebody who has no memory of their time here there have a reason to go back? Like, that was kind of dumb. I mean, I know part of it, part of it was they had to explain it to the viewer and the player, but there are better ways to go about this, writers. There really are. I mean, I, I, I know I bitch a lot about the writing and stuff like that, and, you know, and, and some people are probably going to say, well, what have you actually written to the... And this is why, actually, I'm not a writer, because I'm fucking terrible at it, is because I can't, on on my own thoughts, without somebody else severely editing me and backing me up, and my thoughts my thoughts flound, flounder and change so damn much. I mean, I haven't spoken a damn thing about this library since 30 seconds we got in here. And here I am now losing my train of thought again. Because I, I'd be way too meticulous, and I couldn't fill in all these gaps. But damn, when I see these gaps, like, I I just can't unsee them. I really just can't. And the annoying part... Oh my god, somebody didn't hit that in time. Uh, the, annoying, the annoying part is, a lot of these simple things can be fixed with just a single line or two of dialogue. 
Like, you really don't need all this exposition to have implications. I mean, half of what I rant about and half the character development I talk about is just from small flavor moments here and there about how they act and interact with things around them and other people. Huh. <sighs> so yeah, needless to say, again, that was kind of a massive disappointment on my thing. I, I can, I can a at least a little bit understand that there literally was no time, and especially knowing... Fuck you, bronchitis. Um, knowing, you know, that what we do now, that obviously, you know, there were issues with Heaven's Ward, and thus they didn't get it released as, as quickly as they wanted to. Uh, and they were a bit upset about that. So I know I know time was a factor in all this. Um, so I'm willing to forgive a little bit on those grounds. But so much opportunity just wasted. And especially on such important characters to this game. And it, 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 it just genuinely upsets me. So, yeah. I, I think I've said enough about that. I think I, I think I about covered what I wanted to. I did not expect to be spending literally the past 15 fucking minutes ranting about this shit. But anyway, let's talk about this library itself, which is obviously a callback to the great library in Final Fantasy V, which is awesome. Um, a lot of people like the music here. I actually don't. Um, I get why this music is the way it is, but it doesn't make me feel like I'm in a library of killer void scent who are trying to protect the forbidden section of the library. It makes me feel like I'm at the doctor's office. Sitting in the waiting room, reading a crappy goth magazine, wishing instead I was in a library of deadly void set trying to kill me and prevent me from getting to the forbidden section. But other than that, this place is not that bad. Um, for me, in normal play, the music just kills me because it's, it's just it's just so loungy elevator music, and it's just it, it, it just makes it a snore fest, which is which is terrible for me because this is otherwise aesthetically a great place. I mean, you get all these, like, chains and stuff on the wall. Presumably, you know, like, they're they're obviously magic to, you know, prevent people who are not qualified and or permissible to get to this stuff and everything like that. Um, so that's kind of awesome. But yeah, this place is absolutely covered from head to toe in, the, in books. And this is just a fucking colony. I can't imagine the size of the fucking libraries in Motherland Charland, which we still have... Even, even now, in the present time, in 2017, know very little about. Which, again, kind of really sucks when the half your people you're supposed to root for are from there, unless it's an important part of their character and history. But whatever, whatever, I digress. So yeah, obviously you've seen a lot of stuff from Final Fantasy V in here, including the page 64. And yes, they do cast level 5 death. Um, it is very rare, though. I've only seen it like two or three times in the span of like two years. And obviously that does create a minor problem because as you can see, this you can go into this dungeon as both level 59 and level 60. And it does not, and, and unlike say like Orin Vale, which automatically sinks you to, 50, uh, to 49, you are not synced to 59 in here, you are synced to I level 150. Um, which is just shy of what the level cap is at level 59 anyway. So besides your level 60 skill, you might as well be level 59. But damn if those level 60 skills aren't useful from time to time. Um, like obviously I don't have mine yet because obviously I'm still level fucking 59 over here. But yes, uh, now that I've spoken of Void Sent and stuff like that. Well, there's a Void Sentence crap in here. But yeah, these Charlians are kind of weird. And they like employ these uh, creatures. And I think some of them are indeed Void Sent. Um, who aren't just here to feed off the book saver and shit like that. As, like, the keepers of the library and stuff like that. Yeah, the keepers aren't people. They're fucking creatures, which I find fascinating. And, uh, like, as you see with Matoya and their, and her pierogos and her brooms and whatever like that, um, they don't explicitly refer to them as familiars, but they might as fucking well be. If not quite as... Ooh, I can take that. Advanced as, you know, the typical wizard familiar, um... Thing. They're, they're not imbued with quite that much intelligence, but that's pretty much what they do, is they, they imbue their intelligence onto these creatures and employ them. Which, not only fascinates me on that front, because they're, they're not, well, for lack of a better term, racist in that regard, but at the same time, it almost makes me wonder, are you not kind of squandering your citizens by not properly employing them to do this stuff? But... I guess they're too busy doing research and comics because the Charlians are just a bunch of fucking nerds. Like, 
like they're just nerds to the extreme. They research every anything and literally everything. And it just absolutely fascinates me. LOL, incoming Facebook joke. There, I said it, all right? Somebody was gonna call me on it if I didn't make some kind of reference to that. But yes, our final boss is a book. It's a fucking book. Okay, and not that I don't know what I'm doing in here, but the tank doesn't know that. Yeah, I was gonna stone skin people, let's not be hasty, but whatever. Oh, come on, you know I had to get a shot in the tank somewhere, because I always do. So yes, the ever-living bibliotaph. So is he, re is he related to Mumra? Is, 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 is that the case here? So we gotta seal all these things off, so he doesn't summon shit from the void. Damn it, I thought I was in Clark Sands and now I'm not, so I'm not gonna wear it wear off so I can There we go. There we go. See, I'm too caught up in like talking about what I'm doing. Like I'm complete I've been on autopilot like this entire fucking dungeon. Okay? I really have. Like this is how familiar I am with these things that I don't even need to think about what the hell I'm doing. At all. So now we gotta partner up. Yeah, somebody come this way. Somebody come this way. Three of you over there. We will soon. So this is what happens if you don't seal it off. That, um... Yeah. That you now have to take care of. And it's kind of a pain in the butt. And I hate these little void spark things because if people don't place them right, they do give a vulnerability stack, which is kind of annoying. Okay, can that infirmity wear off already so I can... There we go. Oh my god, I'm taking so much damage because I have a shit for health right now. So yeah, now you need three of you to seal off the gate. But thankfully, there's only two of them because there's only six little portal thingies each time. Hooray! Thank you for giving me a way to fail safe out of this. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why the boss is a fucking book. Like, obviously, it couldn't be Ifrit. I mean, even though you had the demo all in, like, if, uh, uh, Biblos and everything like that. I love how he's got the handles for nose rings. Uh, I do have to say, I like that. But, like, this thing was just, like, creepy, and it just, just to me, just does not fit with the aesthetic of the rest of the place at all. Um, considering, like, why is this not one of their, one of the creatures they employ, just super size, as being the keeper of this room? Like, why is it a book that's been given life? That, that just, just, just always just kind of weirded me out. Oh, hey, crystal number five. All right. And we get more of our gift back, and Midgard Somer still hasn't yet nothing to say to us. You are still following me, right? Right? Holy god, those, some of these pages are huge, They're like the size of me! And 
that just happens to be sitting on the floor in this room. You know, it would have been funnier. And I dare say this is kind of a missed opportunity both for plot and for humor. That it would have been funnier if the actual ever-living Biblioteth itself was the very book we needed. And that's what was Matoya's last joke was that she not only hid the book away but she enchanted it. So it would try to kick your ass if you ever tried to read it. That's what they should have done with that. They, they really should have. That is a, such a fucking wasted opportunity right there. Ah. Oh. All right, back to Matoya's cave we go. We must return the forbidden tome at all. You two have anything to say for yourselves? Aw, oh, you don't want to do some hard work while I go and kill things for you. Aw. See, I love this. Like, even though she, like, totally fucking and, like, insulted him and everything like that, he is, like, just totally cool with her. He has a name. Do you even remember it? Well, maybe you should work on more commonly summoning the one you have now and, and then we'll then we'll kind of get there. Yeah, I think we should just take that as a compliment. Because by doing so, she pretty much, just, you know, she could have just called you a worthless pile of the crap who's never going to amount to anything, so... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's the same thing. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this episode. Um, we'll have to wait for her to actually like tell us what's in it um, next time. And yeah, hopefully this gives us the exactly the information we need. Hopefully it's in a language and or writing we can understand so we can give it to Sid. Um, by language, I mean terminology, not, like, actual languages, because everyone pretty much speaks ARC, and they never get into that either. It's like, do people speak actual different, like, tongues? I don't know. I don't know. I don't care right now. So thank you for watching, friends, and we shall find out more next time.